Hi, welcome to Async Funk Introduction. In this episode I will demonstrate how easy it is to make your code run asynchronously. We will start with a sample application that looks for the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything. This task takes a lot of time, but if we wait patiently we can get a correct result. Right now all the heavy computations are packed in getAnswer method. It's invoked in event handler of findAnswer button. Because it runs on the same thread as our UI, we are unable to move the window or press any of the buttons. Let's change it. We would like to execute getAnswer method on the background thread without changing any of its logic. In order to achieve it, we will need just a single instance of asyncfunc class. It's very similar to func generic delegate. It uses generics to determine the signature of the method we want to run asynchronously. In our case, both parameters and return value are strings. In the constructor, we need to pass just the method. Next, we should subscribe to completion event. We can use code generator that's available in Visual Studio. Notice that we didn't get string, but async func completed event arc. It's because the asynchronous function can throw an exception or be cancelled by the user. We should cover all those situations. Okay. Once we are sure that the result is valid, we can process it in the same way as we did in the synchronous version. The result is available in result property. Finally, we need to trigger the function. We do it by calling invoke async. and it accepts just the same parameters as our previous version. Let's just compile it. OK. Now everything runs in the background and our UI is finally responsive. Unfortunately, this solution has one flaw, namely Async func can perform only single operation at a time. Therefore, if we press find answer button twice, we'll get an exception saying that operation is still executing. We can avoid that by either using another class from async func library named async func multiple invocation or by implementing tester doer pattern. In our case, the second approach fits better. We can implement it using isBusy property. Rarely, this approach can suffer from race condition. That's why async func comes with another option. We can use Try invoke async. It accepts the same parameters 
and its main advantage is that it's completely thread safe. Now everything runs smoothly. In next episode I will show how to add cancellation logic to our application. Thank you.